it's Dave. So, I think I'm going to be able to drive my Tesla with unsupervised FSD by the end of the year in Austin. In this video, I'm going to share my reasonings and rationale behind this conclusion. All right, so in this past earnings call a couple days ago, Elon shared how his hope was to release unsupervised FSD in some regions or areas in the U.S. by the end of the year. So how is this actually going to happen? And is it really realistic to expect to drive unsupervised, let's say, in the U.S. by the end of the year? I think it's somewhat nuanced, and it, so I want to kind of break it down and explain my, my reasoning and thought process behind why I think in certain areas it could be possible. All right, so first off, we need to go back to how Tesla is expanding their robo-taxi geofenced area and how that's going to intersect with unsupervised, let's say, FSD for the regular person. So we know that Tesla's robo-taxi build is several months ahead of general production, according to Elon. And Tesla's job is to bring some of those improvements back into the general release. However, if you think about it, what is Tesla doing specifically to make RoboTaxi that much better, let's say, than our version 13.2.9 in our cars today? I think first off, they could be using obviously a more advanced neural net. They probably could have already increased the parameters of the neural net, more data, uh, more training, etc. However, I think probably one crucial part of the training could be the use of simulation. So we've seen pictures of Tesla having these cars with 360 cameras, with solid state LiDAR, and other devices to actually go around the streets of Austin. Some people call it validation. In my opinion, I think one of the key kind of use cases that Tesla is using this for is they're gathering basically images and data of all of the streets in their geofenced area, and they're feeding that into their simulation engine where they're creating a simulation of all of the streets in the geofenced area. And then Tesla is running perhaps hundreds of millions of simulated rides through those streets in their simulation engine. So why would Tesla do that? If Tesla can get an accurate simulation of all of the geofenced streets in the geofenced area, then Tesla, by running hundreds of millions of rides, let's say basically you're taking cars in the you know, 3D simulated engine and running millions of, of, of rides through and also trying to basically make the car potentially make mistakes and see where it's making mistakes. By doing that, you're able to correct the mistakes and basically radically improve the performance and the safety profile of Tesla's FSD in that geofenced area. Now, the problem arises if you do too much of kind of a specialized, localized training, it could potentially cause some problems for other regions because we've overweighted the training for that local region. Now, it could improve driving overall in many other areas as well. So that's one of the reasons Tesla needs to validate um, the general release to make sure that it hasn't introduced um, some regressions in other parts or other areas of driving. Now by using, let's say, simulation, better neural nets and other techniques, Tesla has managed to make the RoboTaxi FSD significantly better than the general release of FSD. And it's a fantastic experience. In Austin, I've ridden it many times, and it just feels so smooth, so confident. It just feels like a whole nother, like step change from the regular FSD version. Now in the earnings call, we know that they don't have a ton of usage data to date. I think it's about 7,000 miles or so, which isn't a ton. However, as Tesla increases the number of vehicles and the geographic, let's say geofenced area, they're going to get more data and they're going to become more confident in terms of right, their performance and safety profile in that region. At a certain point, Tesla will feel safe enough and confident enough to remove the safety monitor from the car. At that point, you're going to basically have an unmanned a robot taxi right, taking people around um, that Austin area and other cities as well. Now, as Tesla gets better with that and they become very confident and they can increase the number of vehicles, of unmanned vehicles in that region, it's going to enter a certain point where they're going to feel like they can actually let people use their own cars using unsupervised FSD in that same region. In other words, unsupervised FSD, I think, will first roll out in robotaxi geofenced areas that have been proven to be safe with unmanned robotaxis. So how will that look specifically? Well, let's say I'm in Austin and it's part of the geofenced area of unmanned robotaxis, and Tesla's confident in that area. Basically, when I 
turning on FSD, it's not going to give me any nags at all. It'll basically just completely drive and I don't even have to look, let's say, ahead and it'll just completely drive. Maybe there'll be an extra mode or something that says, you know, attention not required or something. Of course, it also might be dependent on regulatory approval. However, even without regulatory approval, they could probably reduce the nags right, and the monitoring so much right, where it kind of feels like there isn't really much monitoring at all. And I think overall, this is kind of the safest and most prudent approach where Tesla goes ahead into certain regions with their robotaxis, with safety monitors, and then basically they back it up with unmanned robotaxis, prove out, right, the safety and performance in certain areas, and then have people use their own cars, right, in FSD mode, but with basically very little monitoring, if any, at all. So anyways, this is why I think it's actually possible that I could be driving unsupervised FSD in Austin by the end of the year in my car. Who knows, maybe it might not be completely where I can go in the back of the seat, obviously, right, and, and sleep in the car. Maybe I'll still have to be in front of the car or in the driver's seat, but maybe there'll be little to no nags or monitoring, and it could feel like basically the car is completely driving itself, even without my kind of oversight and supervision. And it's exciting because we're still in the early stages of FSD rollout or robotaxi rollout. And kind of this first rollout of unsupervised FSD to the general public will be super interesting, I think special, and it'll just continue into next year. And this is likely going to be a demand boost for Tesla vehicles as more and more people understand the value that FSD and let's say unsupervised FSD can bring to their life. I mean, think about all the time and energy, right, saved from not having to focus on driving or even having to supervise, right, your driving at all. All right, anyways, hope this has been helpful. We'll see you guys in my next video, thanks.